Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to wherever you are in the world. My name is Andrew Glazer, and today I would like to teach you how to write an equation of a rational function with these characteristics. You have the vertical asymptotes at x is equal to negative 3 and 6. You have a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to negative 2. And they have x-intercepts here at negative 2 and 1. All right. So the way to do this is to first consider what a rational function is. Remember, a rational function is simply going to be some function that has a polynomial on the top and some polynomial in, on the bottom, or meaning in the denominator. So the first thing I like to do is first start with the vertical asymptotes. All right, remember, these are the values of x that give a wacky result to this function. In other words, x can't be negative 3, and x cannot be 6. Okay, now the only result here, or value, that's going to throw this rational function off is if you have a 0 in the denominator, right? Because you can't divide something by 0. All fractions, if there's a 0 in the denominator, your calculator is going to yell at you it's not going to know what you want to do because you can't do it. What's 5 divided by 0? Don't say 0. Right? I'll ask you this question. How many times does nothing fit into 5? Well, infinite number of times, right? I mean, it's nothing. Or it just doesn't make any sense. You can think about it that way, too. All right? So you can't divide by 0. So what I'm looking to do now is I'm looking to make expressions down here to cause that denominator to go to, the z to, go to 0, when x is negative 3. So basically, if I write this expression of x plus 3, that means that when x is negative 3, what is this going to become? Let's write 0. And if I have a 0 in the denominator times by whatever the heck this is at the moment, it doesn't matter, it's going to be 0 overall. And the same thing over here. I'm basically going to take that x value and just change the sign of the 6, all right? And I get my other factor. And that's all there is to it for the vertical asymptotes. Now, it turns out the x-intercepts are going to be the same concept just applied to now the numerator. Because remember, any time you have an x-intercept, the value of the function or the y-value is always 0. So what gives a result of 0 for that particular expression? Well, only when you have a 0 in the numerator. Only a 0 in the numerator. So we're going to approach it the same exact way. Okay, I got two of these. If you had 10 of them, you'd have 10 of these brackets. Hopefully that doesn't happen to you. But it would just be the same thing. So I'd have x plus 2, right? Because when x is a minus 2, when I, if I add 2 to that, it becomes 0. And same thing over here. If 1, then it's going to be x minus 1. Okay? Now, not to overcomplicate this next part, if you have a horizontal asymptote, it's very, very simple. You have to place in a coefficient in front. Okay? So whatever this horizontal asymptote is, it's a negative 2. You're literally just going to put right in there negative 2. And I mean, that's it. That's all there is to it. So to rewrite this, they might want this, you know, not in factored form, but maybe you have to foil it. It would just simply be negative 2. And then on the top, you'd have x squared, right? We know how to foil this. Then the simple part of the foiling is just take positive 2 and add a negative 1 to it. So that would be a positive 1. And then just write x along with it. Okay, so you can leave out the 1 because the coefficient doesn't really do anything. And then the 2 times the negative 1 is simply going to be a negative 2. And then on the bottom... You got your x squared. Just add these two terms together. That's going to be a negative 3. Shove on an x. And then multiply those together for a negative 18. All right? And that's it. This is the function. This is it. All right? And you can throw it into the calculator if you want to graph it. Watch. Just do... Just do... Why, why did I have a negative... Oh, yeah. Negative 2. Okay. Negative 2 times x squared plus x minus 2 all being divided then by x squared minus 3x, all right, plus, uh, minus 18, and graph it. So here's our graph, okay? Now let's see what's going on here. So it says we should have a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to negative 2. Well, gosh, that looks pretty darn close, right? Remember the calculator, if you're like, oh, that goes a little bit above it, I wouldn't disagree with you. Um, it's just, you know, just keep in mind that the calculator, you know, it's pixelated, all right? But you know, it goes to y is equal to negative 2 there. That's the horizontal asymptote. The x-intercepts of negative 2, 1, look, it crossed the x-axis at negative 2, crossed the x-axis is 1, beautiful thing. And then we also have a horizontal asymptote at, at uh, excuse me, a vertical, two vertical asymptotes at negative 3 and 6. So it looks like negative 3 is over here. See that beautiful vertical asymptote? And then 6 looks like it's probably 
I'm going to guess one, two, three, four, five, six, right over here. And that's all there is to it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for tuning in. Check out our channel because I'd love to help you with more stuff. I have thousands of videos out there. We have thousands of videos. My sister and I, we run this thing. We try to put out so much content for you guys to help you through your class. Not only mathematics here, but chemistry and physics as well. We always have stuff coming out. We'd love to help you with more. Take a look. Talk to you soon. Well, passively at least.